you are a non human entity if you are a demon you know, this is the exact opposite of every haunted place we've been to yet somehow it manages to be really jarring people that are being exercised on the streets here and make you nervous I'm a little shaken after what I saw. Um, people convulsing, shaking, um, screaming at themselves. Welcome to Bootbusters, a show where I, Aryan, and I, Shwarya, venture into some of India's most haunted locations to find evidence for ghosts or bust the booth once and for all. This week, we head to India's only exorcism temple, where possessed people from around the country, no matter their class, caste, or religion, come to get ghosts removed from themselves. Thousands, if not millions, of evil spirits that have been removed through exorcisms linger under one roof. that one roof being a remote haunted temple in Rajasthan welcome to the Mehendipur Balaji temple we are finally here at the Balaji temple in Mehendipur Rajasthan a temple known for exorcisms and little did i know right when you enter the temple you will see exorcisms and people who are seemingly possessed on the road doing things to themselves hitting their heads on the walls yeah We're overlooking the entire town of Mehendipur right now, and are at the gates of one of the mandirs where um, exorcisms take place. Ashwara, are you excited to be here? I'm excited. I'm a little bit taken aback from everything I saw down there. It's a little bit of a sensory overload in what is supposed to be a holy, calm space, but it's not necessarily like that. Yeah. I'm excited to see what's going on. It's a little bit jarring, a little bit sad to see people in that condition. There's also a lot of people just here to pray. Yeah. Uh, and just here to be themselves and ask the Lord for their for their dreams and hopes and wishes. So I'm excited to see all of it and take it all in and be sensory overloaded. All right then. Let's, Let's go check it. it out. Yeah. बालाजी मंदिर में सभी जगह के ऑल ऑफ इंडिया की सभी जगह मीन्स पूरे इंडिया से ही सभी यात्री अपने अपने जो दुख दर्द हैं या कोई भी संकट की प्रॉब्लम है संकट मीन्स जो प्रेत आत्माएँ हैं जो लोगों को परेशान करती हैं जो भटकी हुई हैं उनका यहाँ एक तरीके से समाधान होता है उनको शांति मिलती है उनको बाबा जगह देते हैं ये मंदिर संकट मोचन है बालाजी महाराज जो है संकट मोचन है बाल रूप में है और सभी संकटों का समाधान करते हैं अनलाइक अदर हॉन्टेड लोकेशन वी हैव विजिटेड बालाजी टेम्पल इन राजस्थान इज फार फ्रॉम डेसलेट Every year hundreds of thousands of pilgrims from all over India flock to this temple dedicated to Hanuman a Hindu deity who had taken the form of a monkey Hanuman is worshipped all over India but why do hundreds of thousands of people flock to this particular temple on the remote western flank of the country The answer isn't as simple as worship it's not as holy as a prayer Hanuman among many things is worshipped for relief from evil spirits Not only that, at this temple, another deity is worshipped, Prethraj, also known as the King of Ghosts. Within the walls of the Balaji Temple are people chained to the walls, people flogging themselves, and people dancing in ecstasy and agony, all in an attempt to rid themselves of demons, literal demons. people report experiencing a change in atmosphere as their car approaches the temple the malevolent beings are palpable in the air around balaji this temple is one of the only in india where exorcisms are conducted on mass but it wasn't always like this you know choosing this as our final location to go to there was a certain mm-hmm. amount of self interest involved right? right like any ghosts we pick up on the way we can rid ourselves Malcha, of bhangar yeah. If, if there's any spirit you know mm-hmm. begum vilayat is haunting us or if mm-hmm. tantrik singhya is you know didn't like my jokes about him balaji is where we make sure they don't Aran, take us back. the fact of the matter is i as a person i'm probably as scared of ghosts as i am with the idea of ever getting an exorcism mm. 
So that will be interesting if I am indeed possessed. Yeah. Good info. It's just right? an insurance policy. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Probably the only place in the world that freaks you out in daytime. I'm actually freaked. I'm more freaked than any of the other places. Right? Yeah. The history of this mysterious temple is uncertain. Although the main structure was built in the 19th century, the deities in the temple date back a thousand years. Several renditions of the origin of this temple can be found in folk tales, but the most common one dates to the 11th century. A thousand years ago, this was a small village surrounded by forests and animals. In this village was a saintly priest named Gosai Ji Maharaj. It is said that one night Gosai Ji was spellbound by a vision. It was night time, and half conscious, he sleepwalked deep into the forest nearby. When he opened his eyes, what lay in front mesmerized him. Animals from around the forest were bowing and paying their respects to a rock. Upon further inspection, it turned out it was no ordinary rock they were paying their obeisance to. Three rocks, three deities emerged from nowhere. An idol of Bhairav, a form of Shiv, an idol of Pretraj, the king of evil spirits, and one of course of Balaji, the child form of Hanuman. When Gosai Ji Maharaj awoke from his entranced dream, it is said that Hanuman himself commanded him to build a temple around the idols. The very same idols are still found here 1000 years later in the 21st century protecting millions of pilgrims from evil. Now the veracity of these stories Ishwara mm -hmm. is something I leave up to the scholars, the mythologists to figure out, right? Mm -hmm. Who am I to weigh in on these? But I will say one thing for sure, right? Whenever I am in a plane and there is turbulence, whenever I'm in a room that's dark, whenever I'm at the cusp of a roller coaster about to go down, yeah. almost reflexively I start chanting the Hanuman Chalisa, yeah. much like millions of Indians that just reflexively use this as a source of empowerment. Hanuman is almost like a symbol of strength in our culture. And that's so interesting to me because I've definitely seen you and your propensity towards this specific deity mm -hmm. and the way you gravitate towards the deity when you're in situations like that and I've seen that even though you're not a deeply religious person yeah. um and it's it's interesting for me to learn that a lot of India resonates with that or with this particular god and yeah that's interesting. You don't need to be religious to summon strength from Hanuman when in distress especially when you feel you're surrounded by the supernatural. Horror movies in the west depict the cross being used as an antidote to evil but the Hindu equivalent would be the Hanuman Chalisa. Kids and adults alike start chanting one particular line of this mantra. Bhut pisach nikat nahi aave mahabir jab naam sunave which translates to no evil ghost will come near you if you chant the name of hanuman everyone in balaji is chanting that name for that very reason to keep ghosts at bay <laughs> But it's not a coincidence that we summon Hanuman when in flight or fright. The deity is intrinsically linked with fending off evil spirits in Hindu mythology. In fact, it is said that a millennia ago, Pretraj, the same king of ghosts, used to torment the local villagers near the erstwhile town of Balaji Temple. Pretraj wreaked havoc in the village by cursing passers-by with mental afflictions such as depression, delusion, and derangement. 
Ultimately, it was Hanuman who defeated the king of demons in this region of Dosa. Ever since, Pretraj became an ally of Hanuman. Together, they are set to alleviate and protect from evil beings, black magic and demonic entities. All of which can be found here, unable to escape the sacred walls of Balaji. Right here, we've stumbled across um, what look like tombstones to um, doofuses like us. But turns out, when you read carefully, there are pitrasthans, which are mm. different from tombstones. Like in Hinduism, these are more tributes to ancestors mm, okay. and a way of safeguarding their interests in the afterlife. So these are dedicated to people that once lived. Yeah, the, the, the ancestors. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, they they line up the entire walkway up to this temple that we're headed to. They're all over. So, yeah. I thought they were tombstones, but apparently not. Uh, let's keep going. Of the many stories of possessions related to Balaji, one is of my relative. One of my family friends has a daughter who was very close to us. She was like any other high school student in India, written with exams and homework and your regular school life. Until one fine day, it all changed forever. She began losing interest in academics, adamantly refusing to study. She felt repulsed going even close to her study, only to vomit and begin hitting her loved ones if they tried to force her. She lost weight rapidly, becoming a shell of the once vibrant girl we knew her to be. The family tried allopathic medications and took her to a doctor. Nothing seemed to work. The scariest part was she began speaking in a deep, gurgling baritone, evidently of a man's. Even though this was a Muslim family, they resolved to take her to the Balaji temple to get their daughter some help. There, the exorcist spoke to the malevolent male spirit harboring her body, revealing that he had entered her body from a cremation ground near her house. He wanted to get back to his old life and felt limited in the girl's body. After performing the rituals, the priest claimed that the ghost of the man left her body. His spirit was now trapped in Balaji like many other spirits that await salvation. Okay, so it didn't cross my mind that when a spirit is exercised in Balaji, it then gets trapped in Balaji. Yeah. So doesn't that kind of create a cycle of those who go to Balaji to get exercised, then catch a spirit from Balaji and leave? Which is why going to Balaji, you have to follow many norms, many That's rules terrifying. that I'll get to because there's a very good chance you catch a ghost. But I, I will say this, you know, this family that I told you mm -hmm. about, they were an educated, rich family, unlike yeah. the stereotypical family you think if I'm telling you about Nexusim, like somebody from rural India. Yeah. You know, there was a study done by psychologists on visitors to Balaji, mm -hmm. the study out of 1981, that shared that 80% of all visitors from Balaji are from urban backgrounds. 80% oh, wow. of them are educated and 82% of them have tried allopathic or like actual medication before visiting Balaji. That's very so it kind of flips the table and you go, maybe this works? Or is there something yeah. to it? Is there something to the trance-like state that these people get induced into? That's very interesting. After the treacherous climb up the hill, we finally reached the remotest temple at the top where locusts told us exorcisms take place. At first, we didn't believe. But then, we saw it. Our first ever exorcism. Guys, we just witnessed, or at least I just witnessed my first ever exorcism. Me too. It was a group exorcism. I'm a little shaken after what I saw, um, people convulsing, shaking, um, screaming at themselves to evict the spirit that possesses them. I'm, I'm a little shaken, Ashwarya. Yeah, no, me too. I, obviously, I knew what we were headed into. I don't think I expected it to be this jarring. I don't think I can fully explain what it is like to be in an ambience of this kind. It's really sad to me, on the one hand, that this goes on here. Um, these people clearly need some form of help. I, I guess I don't know what kind of help that is, but they do need it. Um, something is wrong. What was more jarring to me was that 95% of them are young women my age. There were hardly any men part of the ex exorcism. It was all young girls. Yeah. And that's doubly sad to me. I don't know why that is, yeah. what the reason behind that is. Um, but it's just, yeah, I'm shaken. I'm really, really sad. Yeah. और तो मैं 80% मिलेंगे केस आपको 
वो वजह ये है कि जैसे पहले तो जैसे औरतों के बाल होते हैं सब अपने बालों को इकट्ठा करके या अपन कहते हैं एक चुटिया गांव में बोलते हैं वो बना के चलती थी खुले बाल कभी नहीं होने चाहिए बाल आप खुले करके चलेंगे ये निश्चित है आपको ये प्रियता आप में आकर वो करेंगे एक कभी परफ्यूम लगा के किसी चौराहे पे जाते हैं या इनका टाइम होता है जैसे बारह बजे बाद या दोपहर बाद में इनका एक टाइमिंग होता है उस हिसाब से या फिर तो का हाँ उस हिसाब से तो ये क्या है कि लेडीज ने एक अपने जो पहनावा है या कई चीज़ें हैं जैसे मैंने खुद ने देखा है एक अनामिका करके लखनऊ से एक लड़की आई थी उनसे मैंने पूछा कि आप को आप इनको क्यों परेशान कर रहे हैं इस लड़के ने क्या बिगाड़ा है आपने जो इनको आप परेशान कर रहे हैं बोले ये लड़की जब ड्यूटी करके आ रही थी तो परफ्यूम लगा रखा था जो परफ्यूम है बहुत अच्छा लगा और फिर मेरे को बाल बिखरे हुए थे तो इतनी सुंदर लग रही थी कि मैंने सोचा कि नहीं के साथ रहें तो फिर मैंने इसके अंदर प्रवेश किया प्रवेश करने के बाद में मेरे को सब कुछ अच्छा नग लगे नग लिया इसलिए मैं इनको नहीं छोड़ना चाहती तो कहने का मतलब ये है कभी भी अपन बाहर जाते हैं या किसी ऐसी जगह से निकलते हैं तो एक तो अपना जो भी पहनावा है अपने भारतीय संस्कृति के हिसाब से वो पूरा पहनावा भी होना चाहिए अंग प्रदर्शन बिल्कुल निषेध है चाहे वो मनुष्य देखेगा चाहे वो ये प्रेतांत माए देखेंगे दृष्टि सबकी होती है तो उस हिसाब से ये लेडीजों को ज़्यादा कवर करते हैं where there is garbage you find good old peppa pig and her family roaming the streets oh that smells so these uh, locks you see all over um and these with dhagas of sorts this is people locking away their problems um, so you shouldn't touch it if you don't want the problem to be transferred on to you but it is just symbolizing people locking away their problems forever leaving them here at balaji and then leaving ye niche se leke aaya paad pe chad ke ye bhi logo ki sankat leke aaya hai upar wow tabhi to yaad aa raha hai hmm The priests in charge of exorcisms then blessed me and Ashwarya, so we are protected by the good forces of this temple. Ashwarya, what was that experience like? It was nothing like I have ever experienced before. I think the best phrase to describe it is an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't think. I don't know. We're so busy in our bubbles, in our cities, and you know, in our bigger countries and whatnot. I think we forget that. At parts of this country, this is going on. Hmm. Our parts of the world, this is going on. It's just it feels like a different world to be in. And I, I don't think it was just an emotional roller coaster for us, but also the people that were partaking oh, in yeah, that absolutely. activity. Oh yeah, absolutely. More so for them. And the thing is, the pundits and the locals, they seem completely impervious to it. They aren't affected. They have a smile on their face as these yeah. uh, processions are going on. And you know, as a as a passerby, as an outsider. it's so bewildering um but yeah the night has or the day has just begun and um, more of this to watch so yeah uh, i think we keep going and trying to figure out what this puzzle of balaji really is yeah let's do it ashwarya and i got into an argument about whether these people were really possessed or not and once we start arguing even ghosts would be afraid of approaching us you know obviously the viewers will be divided right yeah. what was happening there was that mass psychosis was that fraud yeah. or is that real is that an exorcism of yeah. actual spirits being taken away from you being evicted from your body and you know i don't know i i, I of course i don't know but i do know hypnosis is real yeah. right and those people there to me seemed hypnotized mm -hmm. but then again the thing is when it seems real these real is a subjective term sometimes right because we are defining it by western scientific standards of sure. whether it can be quantified and measured so i see an argument there but um, it was definitely mass hypnosis if nothing else i don't know i don't claim to know what it is but i think we as logical observers who've had a certain breadth of an education can definitely rule out things it's not like can we justifiably rule out that it's not 
a unicorn coming in and showering these people with pixie dust. I think that's, you know, so there are things that we can rule out as an, as an observer that we feel like it couldn't possibly be. And to me, it couldn't possibly be an actual exorcism. I think that is a possibility and that's a bet I'm willing to hedge on. I don't think that's what it is. Even if it is a proper hypnotism with hypnotherapy at play, that's not how it's done. No. To be in a hypnotic state 24-7 is really hard. If these people experience this while they're asleep, if these people no, experience this... No, they were, they were hypnotized. Ashura, they're not in a state of hypnosis 24-7. What they were experiencing right now, even through scientific studies, is they were hypnotized, uh -huh. put in a trance, and then fed things like there's a ghost in you, it's coming out. And so they behave that way. The hypnosis was just the just that much. So whatever the claims are, that is the hypnosis. They're not hypnotized 24-7. They're not behaving That's like not that 24-7. I mean. Again, so then why, <clears throat> what is the need to bring these people here? They're experiencing something back at home, right? Yeah, yeah, For which yeah. they need to be brought here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, to me, it's important. Again, this has become like a redundant conversation now. I agree. These are people that have, at the very least, mental health problems. But if they do have mental health issues, then anyone with schizophrenia experiences this for a large part of their day. So then it's not like, that's what I'm trying to say. But anyway. To me, the way they were snapped out of it is yeah. quintessential hypnosis. That's something Shakti also pointed out, that they just kind of got up and became yeah. okay. That's how the hypno... And like many, um, so there was a Yale and AIM study, right? And even they talked about how these definitely seem like states of trance that they're put in. Yeah. Because of hypnosis. <laughs> are still recording us. Um. Unaware that we were being recorded during our argument, we finally agreed to disagree. Wow. The phenomenon of possession is ubiquitous across cultures. Jinns, ghosts and booth all have the ability to possess a mortal soul to live out their desires, harming the person in doing so. And where there is possession, naturally there is an exorcism, which is the antidote. Exorcism is the religious practice of removing an evil entity from a possessed person. It takes many forms, some involve chanting religious hymns like the Bible or Vedic texts, while others are much more radical and gruesome such as flogging and beating the possessed soul in an attempt to remove it. At Balaji, a spectrum of exorcisms are available. People of all kinds come to remove ghosts of all kinds. And once a ghost is removed, it always lingers in the premises of this temple. That's why Balaji is one temple where locals are very strict about enforcing and following norms to prevent catching one of these evil entities. Of the many rules unique to Balaji, a few are Firstly, it is prohibited to talk to or touch any stranger inside the temple. If you are approached by strange looking men and women, you are warned from making eye contact with them. They say these are possessed beings who pass on their spirits so they can be relieved. Two, absolutely do not accept any food from anyone. Balaji has its fair share of black magic and tantric practitioners roaming the streets. They tend to approach newcomers with items guised as prashad or an offering only to cast spells on you. Forget taking food from strangers, you can't even take food from your loved ones or the priests. Eating or drinking within the premises of the temple is strictly prohibited. Any prasad given by the priest mustn't be consumed either. It should be disposed of prior to leaving the temple. Now, all these rules are fine, but it's the <laughs> final <laughs> It's the final rule that scares the living daylights out of me. Okay. It's that because the spirits mm -hmm. continue to linger in Balaji, mm -hmm. when you leave the temple after having worshipped the god, mm -hmm. you cannot look back. You must, you know, fix your gaze to the exit, keep walking and never look back lest you want some spirit to catch you right as you're about to leave. That's terrifying. Yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> but I guess here's to never looking back. Here's to never looking back. <laughs> Alright, I don't know if you guys can hear the sound of the bells going off. So the main aarti is beginning in the main temple, the Balaji temple right now at 6.30pm yep. in the evening and we're heading there just as we speak. On our way to the main aarti, we found a small temple where exorcisms were taking place. We had to see for ourselves what was the source of these howling noises.
last Aarti remaining for the riddle. I look at the line. It's the longest thing in the world. There's a concert or something out there. Guys, the Aarti has begun and this is unlike any Aarti I've ever experienced. Ever seen before, yeah. You can hear people screaming, screeching, banging their heads. Um, and as Ashwarya noted, it's mostly women. Mostly all women. There's hardly any men. You guys will see some footage now. Firstly, this road is jam-packed. There's no place to even step a foot and move a little yeah. bit. Um, but you will see the amount of people down there who seem to be still possessed. But it's also it's but it's also an unparalleled devotion, you know. I mean, perhaps are, yeah, perhaps that's what it is. And there yeah. are there are people here just here to pray to Hanuman. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the streets are packed. So just to be able to get this shot, we booked out a room for the entire day. All the way, is going to be up for ten minutes because there's no space to shoot. Look at that lady. Oh. Someone's holding her. God. That. That's what, yeah, that's what I wanted you guys to see. I don't know if that is unparalleled devotion or someone that's possessed. I genuinely do not know. And I wish I had more answers, but this is just crazy. <laughs> He's just having fun. I've been to Varanasi. I've been to so many cities across India. So I am spiritual, but... This is a level. This is a this is a flavor of spirituality that I've never experienced, and it is unnerving. You know, this is the exact opposite of every haunted place we've been to. Yet somehow, it manages to be really jarring. It manages to be more jarring than any of the other places we've been to, for sure. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Look, Holy look at the crap, monkey! Look at the monkey! Get the monkey! Get the monkey. So my mom's really religious and I think she would love to get a chance to see this Aarti except she seems to be busy right now. <laughs> Does this make you believe in ghosts, yes or no? Yes. So our director Shaq just felt like somebody shouted his name out loud and I mean there is nobody out around us to shout his name but the rule is if you hear somebody say your name which is a very frequently reported occurrence you do not look back. You do not respond to that voice. Um, I don't know who would have said Shaq here. Most unlikely name. Most unlikely world. name to oh, yeah. just hear randomly. Which is what makes it terrifying. But he didn't look back. Good. So we're Shaq well and good. Shaq the rules from our, yeah. from our episode. We need you for season two, dude. suffering at the end of the day, whether it is psychosomatic, whether it is mental health, whether it is a disease, whether it's a ghost, it's still suffering, right? And you, you want it to be alleviated one way or the other. I couldn't imagine being down there right now. This seems like we're at the cusp of a stampede, like you see it take place. That's a sea of people, man. That's a sea of people. Exorcisms in the West are pretty well documented thanks to Hollywood. Most of us are vaguely familiar with the process in Catholicism, wherein a request for an exorcism has to be approved by the Vatican and has to follow a very precise manner and conducted by a specific priest called the exorcist. Balaji is no different. The process of exorcisms is modelled after a legal court-like setting wherein Hanuman is the supreme judge. Preet Raj and Bhairav act as lawyers who prosecute the evil spirit who is the defendant and the other spirits present around serve as messengers. The possessed individual has to make a darkast, an Urdu term for a legal application. This is in the form of rice and lentils worth one and a quarter rupees and two pieces of Indian sweets called laddus. The priest then gives the possessed individual two black laddus which have to be thrown at birds. This tends to induce a trance or a peshi. Some spirits are too demonic for the trance to work, so a further arzi or request needs to be made costing 17 and a quarter rupees worth of offering. If that fails, something called a badi arzi, a bigger request, costing 21 and a quarter rupees is made as a final ditch attempt to summon the spirit. 
no matter the hour of the day. In Balaji, you will see several people entranced. Shouts and screams resound across the halls of this mysterious temple. Once in trance, the individual begins talking in tongues and switches between their voice and that of the spirits. So we were about to head to the Balaji temple at night to do our investigation, but right as we were about to head out, our hotel manager, the owner in fact, in the interview told us that tonight, the family is staying with us in the room right behind us and the room adjacent to us are possessed families who brought their daughters here and the women of their family here to get them relieved of the spirits inhabiting them. In fact, our hotel owner told us that in his many years of working at Balaji, the spirit that is possessing the woman in the room right there is one that has terrified more than any other. वैसे तो आज अभी अपने यहीं रुके हुए हैं गेस्ट रूम नंबर शायद चार में हैं उन्होंने ही डराया था मैंने कि हमको डराने की जरूरत नहीं है मैंने कि हम बाबा के दरबार में हैं यहाँ सच्चा दरबार है आप बाबा के दरबार में यहाँ के जो हैं उनको तो आप डरा ही नहीं सकते उन्होंने ये कहा कि आप हमको जानते नहीं हो मैंने कि आप नहीं जानते हो हमारे दरबार में कौन बैठे हुए यहाँ के राजा भी यही हैं और यहाँ के दरबार में जो फैसला सुनाते हैं सब कुछ यही है but in front of them, you can't get any of them in front of them. So we thought before we head to the temple, just 700 meters away from it where we are, we'll try and communicate with the spirits, if any, that are here with us right now. So for that, we have our good old handy spirit box with us. And we'll try and see if we can communicate with the spirits that are apparently living right here with us. The spirit box sweeps across several radio frequencies per second, which can be used by spirits to cook the physical world. When we ask the spirits questions, they can manipulate the white noise to answer us. Is there anyone in this premise here, any spirit here? If you are, communicate using this spirit box. Are you currently possessing the two women in the room behind us? जो भूत यहाँ हमारे साथ रह रहा है, अगर वो इस कमरे में अभी हमारे साथ है, हमें कोई भी निशानी दो। Are you scared to be here at the Balaji Temple? This is where, you know, you and your kind are brought to be removed and, you know, eviscerated once and for all. Look who's scaring the spirits now. I have Hanuman behind me, you know, I'm a little jazzed up. Koi bhi hai is kamre mein, is pure hotel mein, jo hum se baat karna chata hai. Koi bhi bhoot, treat, atma. Is hotel mein pata nahi kitne loog rahe honge. God knows how many people over the course of so many years who've come here for the sake of having an exorcism and not one spirit that wants to talk to us. If not the spirit box, just... Anything. You know, and I'd hate this to be the place where you show yourself because I'm supposed to sleep here tonight. <laughs> but if if need be, fine, uh, show us yourself. Make a sound. Right at that window. Just pass by you don't need to like don't every horror I can't, movie. I won't be able to sleep right <laughs> now. Make some noise, come on. For the Desi boys in this house, come on. Nope. Alright. I don't think there's anything here, guys. Nothing that wants to talk to us, at least. Alright, uh, let's see if something wants to talk to us at the temple premises. When we went to the temple at night, there were lots of women crying and convulsing in front of the gates. But when we observed them, we could hear their high-pitched shrill voices change into manly grunts. <laughs> So we are in the Balaji temple premises in the middle of the night. Um, there's nobody around uh, and it's the exact opposite of what we saw in the day when it was just packed with people. 
आई एम रियली रियली अनर्व राइट नाउ द ओनली थिंग इज दैट मेक्स ऑल ऑफ दिस सो मच मोर टेरिफाइंग इज दैट राइट ऑन द मेन स्ट्रीट देर आर स्टिल द पीपल हु वर पोजेस्ड सो एवरी वन एल्स इज गॉन just the people who were possessed are still out on the street still hoping to be cured still hoping to be exercised so walking down that street in the middle of the night is terrifying it's terrifying so scary and we we'll now try to speak to the spirits if any here at balaji i am frankly really nervous for this bit of the investigation um but let's see if we can you know use the mag light to speak to people The mag light is a torch that can be manipulated to turn on and off without physical contact and used to communicate with the paranormal world. Spirits can answer questions by coming close to the light and switching it on or off. If there's any spirit here with us right now, turn on the mag light. Any of the spirits that were exorcised at any given point in time in the history of this temple, if you're here, holy crap. Um if you have it's just a cat the <laughs> more animals and spirits everywhere um turn off that light if you're finally free there's nothing on the emf i think that is a yes if you're the spirit of a woman turn that light on if you're the spirit of a man turn that light on if you are a non human entity if you're a demon <sighs> right if you're here to repossess a human hurt a human turn that light off if you want to possess one of us turn that light on <laughs> fully properly on i will not accept a half answer i want a decisive turn on good good right. great i i'll i think let's end it while it's happening yep yep we have done with this nobody's <laughs> done been possessed done with the maglite nobody's been possessed that was scary though that's definitely no. okay let's bring out the mother of ghost All hunting ghost equipment. equipment the rampart The REM pod produces an electromagnetic field around it and detects fluctuations in ambient temperature. When something moves close to the REM pod, it indicates its presence by blinking its four LED lights and beeping. We now have the REM pod out. If there is any spirit here in this entire alleyway where thousands, millions of exorcised people, people who are known to be possessed have walked, if any spirit is here, come close to this device and make your presence known so the temple of balaji is right behind us you know if you can see if you pan the camera there you can see it it's right and so most of the exorcisms and the pages that happen happen there and so if there are any spirits it would make sense that we could Find them here. See them here. If there is any spirit here with us, please go close to this. We don't want to hurt more. you. Make any kind of sound. We don't want to hurt you. We're not here to disturb you. We just want to try and talk. We just want to prove to the world that you're not a farce. We want to prove to the world that this temple is not built on nothing. Come close to this and show us you exist. There have to be spirits here who this temple has helped free. So if those spirits want to clear the name. Come here, show the world you exist. Give okay. us any kind of sign. अगर यहाँ कोई भूत प्रेत हमारे साथ है, क्या वो हमारे सामने आ सकते हैं? Better any ghosts here with us? Can you come and talk to us? Make yourself known somehow, anyhow. Just crickets chirping in the dead of the night. And monkeys. Too much wildlife. I think that's it. The report. Yeah. He wants to talk to us. <clears throat> All right. I think Since that's that. It's a one-sided relationship with this thing. You know, it's like does not want to talk. Love. Honestly, I I had decided this in my brain that if it does not go off here, I'd reconsider whether or not we have a functioning report, and it hasn't. 
I'm a little bit doubtful of whether or not this device it actually works. It is a see, yes, it is a functioning RAM board. That's no, and that's I, I true. I hate this sound. So it does work, you know. Yeah, I guess we're done with this. Okay, guys, I'm heading upstairs to a door where this, when we were here at like 6 p.m., we heard a ton of women screaming from inside. They were all locked inside behind this huge metal door. The door was bolted shut, but there were so many women screaming. We could hear them. I can hear women screaming inside, guys. And with that, we are at an end to our investigation here at Balaji Mandir Finally. in Mandipur, Rajasthan. Uh, what a roller coaster this episode has been, but yeah. what a roller coaster this season has been. For sure. Um, this place, though, this temple, it's, it's really unsettled me. Um, the things we saw, uh, I, I might have seen in horror movies, right? Yeah. This is what nightmares are, this is what horror movies are truly made of. And um, yeah, I think I'll need a little time to settle back into normal life. All and, of us, yeah. Um, truly just compute and analyze what I just witnessed here today. Yeah. No, I agree. I think there's a certain heaviness that I can feel that isn't fully explicable and I think we all feel it. A kind of heaviness that only comes with a really probably traumatic personal experience mm. you've had in your life but none of us have had that. We just have that heaviness without the experience. But uh, it's a good thing that according to the locals if you do feel that heaviness at all this is the place to be and this place is nothing but positive energies according to them. So I'm glad like Aryan said that we're ending this episode here for all of our sakes. But Aran, with that, we must answer the perennial question from across this season, which is, and this time, let's go with a cursometer. So on a scale of one curses to 10, where would you rate this location? I think uh, given how jarring this place was, and, yeah. um, the things we saw. The you fact know, that I was actually cursed. She was yeah. actually cursed for not giving 20 rupees, <laughs> uh, which is a pretty sort of, you know, not the best reason to curse somebody. No. I would give it an eight and eight on the cursometer scale, that's tough to pronounce. It's a good uh, number, yeah. And um, yeah, I think nine and ten uh, ratings are reserved for a special special designation. Yeah, no, I agree. For me, a nine and ten would be a location where I am for sure that I, with my own eyes, have seen something that can be nothing but a paranormal presence. And while this place was jarring and scary and everything in between, I don't think I'm 100% convinced mm. that this had paranormal presence here. But here's to hoping. Just Season 2 of Woodbusters Absolutely. will have places that are rated 9 and 10. I can't wait, but also I can. <laughs> If you like what we do here at the AC Studios and absolutely love what we're wearing today, this is merch you can go buy all for yourself. You can buy this Desi Crime merch in our YouTube store on the link down below at Kadak Merch. Keep the engines at Desi Studios rolling so we can pay our videographer right behind the camera to make these amazing episodes just for you.